So essentially what I want you to leave today with is an idea that dementia is a happening field. It's not a wasteland that patients develop it and there's nothing that we can do. And it happens to young people as well as old people, which means that we have to work together in managing this disease. So currently, how it stands in Australia is that dementia is managed by a number of subspecialties. So you've got geriatricians, neurologists, psychiatrists, and neuropsychologists. And we don't always work well together. And essentially, the person who misses out is the patient. But through innovation through Sydney Local Health District, what we've created between RPA and Concord is a network to manage dementia with geriatricians and neurologists working together. So what do we mean by dementia? Well, it's an umbrella term that we use for a neurological condition that affects one's overall cognitive function. If you read the newspaper, we've got a tsunami of dementia coming. So currently, about 300,000 Australians suffer from dementia, and by 2050, it's estimated that we'll diagnose at least 7,400 new cases a week. At the moment, about 25,000 people suffer from what we call young onset dementia. So these are people that are less than 65. So I have patients in my clinic who are aged in their early 40s who have dementia. And this is a real problem because these are people who are still working, still have young children at school. And so we need to work together to manage them. Also, the misconception is that dementia is just Alzheimer's disease. So there are a lot of other conditions that cause dementia, such as frontotemporal dementia, motor neurone disease, and also Parkinson's disease. So there's a huge economic cost from dementia. So it's estimated by 2056 that it'll cost the Australian um, government $36.85 billion to manage patients with dementia. So if we look at Alzheimer's disease, this is the most commonest form of dementia. And there's a misconception that you only know that you have dementia when you have it. But what we know is there are actually three clinical phases of dementia. There's a preclinical phase where we can actually detect that patients have dementia through the use of biomarkers. Then there's a stage that we call mild cognitive impairment where pe people have some subtle changes. And there's when, uh, ch more uh, noticeable changes when pe people have dementia. And the reason that a lot of the clinical trials have failed is that we tend to diagnose people when it's too late, when they've already got established dementia. So if we're gonna act and save people with dementia, what we really need to do is have early diagnosis. So we need to detect people when they're in this preclinical phase. Also, what we need to work on is accurate diagnosis. So the other problem we have in dementia is a lot of the dementia syndromes tend to overlap. So someone can present with frontotemporal dementia and we diagnose them with that, but when they die and we look at their brain, they've actually got Alzheimer's disease pathology. So we need to have more accurate ways of diagnosing patients with dementia. And so that really means that we need services that link clinical services with research that we then translate into uh, treating patients and diagnosing them. And that's really what we've established in the Sydney Local Health District. So I'll tell you a story. I went to the Neurology Innovation Symposium, which is about three years ago, and I was standing in the corner and I saw Teresa Anderson walking out and I thought, I've got an idea, now's my chance. So I went to her and I said, look, I've got this idea for a clinical service. And she said, here's my card, make an appointment to come and see me. And I think that really shows that Sydney Local Health District is interested in innovation. And I call the people of the photographs here are shepherds. So they're really people that helped us get this service up and running. So Paul Staley, who's in the front here, came to the first meeting with me to pitch the idea. And uh, John Cullen here as well helped us shepherd the clinic through. And essentially this clinic is a combination of neurology and geriatrics together, combining with research across the district to help manage dementia. So what is the clinic? So essentially, it's a clinic where you can come and see a neurologist or a geriatrician, get a diagnosis of uh, dementia or hopefully not dementia, and then also commence treatment. So essentially, there are treatments for dementia, and I'll take you through that further on. Then patients are seen by a multidisciplinary clinic. So they get seen by a nurse, a social worker, an occupational therapist, and also a neuropsychologist. And they provide an intensive treatment program for the patients. So how have we done in our first year? 
So in the first year, we've seen over 250 patients. We've had referrals from interstate, regional New South Wales, and also the inner west. And if we look at the age range, patients ranged from 30 years to 95 years. And we can see that the most common form of dementia that we've seen is Alzheimer's disease. But there's a mix of frontotemporal dementia and also other what we call neurodegenerative diseases. And really, what we've pioneered in this clinic is an approach using clinical assessment, clinical examination, but also brain imaging and the use of biomarkers to help diagnose patients early. So what I wanted to do now was take you through a case where we've diagnosed a patient in the clinic and show you how the system works. So this is a patient, she's aged uh, 56 years. She presented with a five to 10 year history of what she called scattiness. So she had difficulties reading, she couldn't follow the lines of the book that she was reading. And when she went on a plane trip overseas, she got herself locked in the airplane toilet, which you can all do, but it was a big, <laughs> problem on the plane. When we tested her, she had what we called quite prominent visuospatial effects. So if you look, um, essentially, this is a normal control uh, copying the intersecting figure eights. This is another normal control. She couldn't do it. So that suggests that there's problem with her visuospatial function. She also had problems uh, counting the number of dots. So we asked patients, here are th four boxes, without using your fingers, tell me how many dots are in the box. And she also had uh, problems reading what we called fragmented letters. So that should be K, M, A, T. And this is another complex test that we got her to do. So essentially we asked patients to uh, copy this diagram and then remember it three mi minutes later. It looks quite hard, but it is possible to do. So this is a normal control subject, um, copying the diagram, and then their three minute recall, which is almost perfect. This is the patient's copy. Uh, so she couldn't copy the picture and she couldn't recall it. So this suggests she's got quite prominent, what we call visuospatial problems and also memory problems. When we looked at her brain imaging, so this is her uh, imaging over here, and we can see there's some subtle widening of um, the sulci in the back part of the brain, but it's not that different to a normal control subject. So we thought there's something wrong, but it's not coming up in our normal structural MRI brain imaging. So what we did next was what's widely available clinically but isn't used often, which is a PET scan. And essentially, we use this to help us diagnose patients. So this is a normal control. So red means normal glucose activity in the brain. This is the patient scan. And can everyone see that she's got decreased glucose activity in the back part of the brain? We then went on to do what we call an amyloid PET scan. So this is available in research cent settings and essentially we give patients a ligand which binds to the major protein that we know causes Alzheimer's disease. And essentially what we can see is, so in this case red is abnormal, so the control subject has a little bit of amyloid, so we all have a little bit of amyloid in our brains, but the patient has greatly increased amyloid deposition in their brain, so it's abnormal and diagnoses Alzheimer's disease. The other thing that we can do to help diagnose Alzheimer's disease is what we call a lumbar puncture, which is a very easy procedure. We take a CSF sample and we measure the proteins that cause Alzheimer's disease. And then we come up with this uh, ratio, which is greater than three, and that confirms a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So in this patient, essentially, we've used a combination of clinical examination, clinical history, and also biomarkers to help diagnose this patient with Alzheimer's disease. And this means that we can trial treatments early on. So essentially, what treatments can we offer patients? Well, there are drug treatments that can slow the progression. So there are two drugs that are funded on the PBS that slow the progression. So for every uh, two years that a patient takes these drugs, they get an extra six months, which when there's no other option, I think that's worthwhile. The other thing that can help patients is this multidisciplinary approach along this winding path that is dementia, and that's what the clinic offers. So they get seen by the OT, the social worker, and the nurse who supplies them with extra support. 
So this is our, our clinic brochure, and we've got some brochures down the front if you'd like to refer anyone. The other thing that is coming on the horizon is clinical trials. So we've got one clinical trial starting in the next couple of months, and I know people have read in the media that drug companies are pulling out of clinical trials, but there are treatments on the horizon, particularly for Alzheimer's disease. So we've had an exciting year. We got ourselves on Sunrise, which was exciting, and I think we should judge our clinical service on what the patients think. And so these are some of the comments of what the patients have thought about our service and how helpful it's been. And when we survey them, we've got a satisfaction score of 9.5. So I hope by the end of this, you're left with the realisation that dementia is not a wasteland. There is hope and there will be treatments for it. Thank you.